Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of these exams ACT, SAT, TES, GMAT, GRE. Regardless of which exam we are preparing for, we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 83. On day number 81, day before yesterday, we began the series on ratio and proportions and we're going to continue with that today we're going to we're going to do a few problems dealing with the notion of proportions the very first problem is already on the blackboard here's how it goes we are told that 4000 square feet 4000 square feet of area needs to be painted we want to paint 4000 square foot we are told that one gallon of paint if we were to buy one gallon of paint it will cover 350 square feet the question is very straightforward the question is very simple very straightforward the question simply is what's the minimum number of gallons of paints that we need to purchase. What's the minimum number of gallons of paint we need to purchase given the fact that we can only buy the we can only buy one gallon cans. We cannot buy half a gallon or a quarter gallon. The, the paint only comes in one gallon size. That's all. What I want you to do is do the problem yourself, pause the video, do it yourself and once you have the answer then resume the video and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in about in a, in a few seconds time. Okay, I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video. All right, here we go. So the very first thing we have to figure out is what are the two things we are dealing with. It's a proportion problem. So we have to first look at the two things we are dealing with. 4,000 square foot. There you go. That's the first item. Square foot of area needs to be painted. Well, there you go. Paint. We are told that we have to cover 4,000 square foot. Whatever I see first is what I write here. 4,000 square foot we need to paint. The question is how many gallons of paint we need to buy given the fact that they go on to tell us that one gallon that one gallon one gallon of paint we are told covers 350 square feet that's it don't make too much fuss about it just put them in the order that you cut that appears in the exam uh, uh, that appears in the question 4000 square foot needs to be painted figure the question is how many gallons of paint do we need we are told that 300 square feet can be painted with one gallon that's it and therefore you just solve for x here it's going to be 350 times x 350 times x cross multiply equals 4000 and therefore x is going to be 4000 over 350 and the question simply is how many gallons of paint do we need now don't make it too complicated don't 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 don't, don't turn it into a freak show here keep it simple break it up into parts that are manageable i see 4000 i see 350 why don't we break up 4000 into 3500 and a 500 3500 divided by 350, 500 divided by 350. So 3500 plus 500 is, is 4000, which is what we have here. This part is very simple. This is 10 gallons. This is 10 gallons. The question is, how much do we need to paint another 500 gallons? Well, another 500 gallon, another 500 gallon can, can be further break it, broken up into 350, 350 square feet and 150 square feet. And this is going to require one gallon. So that's 11 gallons so far, and then we still have 150 square foot of area that is not painted if we only buy 11 gallons. 11 gallons will not do the job. 11 gallons will, will leave us with 150 square feet of area unpainted. To cover that additional 150 square foot of area, we have no choice but to buy one more gallon. We need to buy all together 1 plus 1, 2 plus 10. We need to buy 12 gallons. We need to buy 12 gallons, 11 gallons simply won't do the job. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. Do the problem. Do the problem. It's always a good idea to do the problems in logical, intuitive way as opposed to simply doing the, sitting there and doing it with a calculator, which is the worst thing that you can do in my opinion or doing it uh, mechanically, you know, simply dividing it out 4000 by 350, you're going to end up with the fractions and all that, and decimal and all that. Just keep it simple. Here you can clearly see we still have 150 square foot left unpainted. Let's do the next one. We are told that Mike takes, Mike takes three hours to read 200 pages. Mike takes three hours to read 200 pages. They go on to tell us that Bob reads 
twice as fast. Okay. Question is how many minutes how many minutes will Bob take to read 100 pages? You have to pay attention to everything here because too, too many things are changing here. Not only not only the second guy reads at a different speed, but he also has a different number of pages to read, 100 pages as opposed to 200 pages. So you have to take your time, because every possible mistake that you can think of, well, I shouldn't say every possible mistake, of course, these are standardized exams, the exams that you're preparing for, whether you're preparing for ACT, SAT, TES, GMAT, or GRE, these are standardized exams. And of course, they are limited as to, uh, in their arsenal as to how many concept choices they can give you. Some exams give you four, some of them give you five. But, of course, one of them is going to be the right answer. The other four answer choices that you see there are the four most popular wrong answers. Always, they are always the four most popular wrong answers. They're not, the wrong answer choices are not just put there at random. If you end up making one of those four popular mistakes, your answer will match one of the answer choices and you will never know that you made a very predictable error. You have to pay attention. We have 100 pages, not 200 pages. The guy reads twice as fast. So, we're just going to do it logically. Instead of setting it up as a proportion problem where there's a, there's a chance of making a mistake because there's too, too, too many things are going on here, let's, let's think it logically. Mike, Mike reads, takes three hours to read 200 pages. Bob reads twice as fast. Bob is twice as fast. Well, if Bob is twice as fast, that implies that Bob must read, must read 400 pages in two hours. Oh, it can't be that simple, can it? Not two hours, sorry, three hours. You must read 400 pages twice as fast in three hours. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you in a second why I thought for a second it was too simple. Because had it been two hours, keep listening. Had it been two hours, had it been two hours, that would have been too simple, as I said a second ago, because had it been two hours, 400 pages in two hours would have meant that to read 100 pages, he needs a half an hour. That would be too simple. It's not two hours, it's three hours. So we just have to do a little bit of calculation. So he takes 400 pages in three hours, he needs to read 100 pages, so that implies that he will read 100 pages, 100 pages in three quarter of an hour, because you divide that both sides by four. You divide this by four, you divide that by four. If you divide that by 4, now we have 400 divided by 4, which is 100 pages right here, and this becomes, instead of 3, it becomes 3 quarters. Let me, let me just tell you what we did here. So it was 400 pages in 3 hours. We don't need 400 pages, we need 100 pages, so you divide both by 4. Divide this by 4, divide that by 4. There you go, 400 divided by 100. 400 divided by 4 is 100 pages in 3 quarters of an hour. Question is how many minutes does it take? Three quarter, three quarter of an hour. Three quarter of an hour is 45 minutes. It's a bit too late in the game because I forgot to give you the answer choices. It's a bit too late in the game. But anyway, it's 45 minutes. Let's do one more. And this time I won't forget to give you the answer choices. Let's do one more. On a blueprint, on a blueprint, one quarter of an inch represents twelve feet. Driveway, I know my handwriting is atrocious, but it's a driveway. Driveway is sixty feet long. What's the length of the driveway in inches? Of course, I'm being lazy here. I don't write down everything here. But what they're saying is that what's the length of the driveway in inches uh, on the given scale, on the blueprint. And here are the answer choices. 
I want you to do it yourself first before you continue watching the video. Here are the answer choices, three quarter, one and one quarter, one and one and a half, two and a half, and five. I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself first, okay? Okay, here we go. There are, there, are, uh, there are two choices, as always, we have here. One way is to set it up in a very academic way, a very, very classical way, a very orthodox way, a very geeky way, a very nerdy way, and actually do it out. Let's do that first, just for the sake of learning. What two things are we dealing with here? That's the first thing we have to figure out. On the blueprint, one fourth of an inch. There you go. We're dealing with inches. Represents 12 feet. We're dealing with feet. And we are told that one quarter inch represents 12 feet. We're going to say the driveway is 60 feet. All right, driveway is 60 feet. The question is how much is that? So that's one way of setting it up. Very straightforward, very simple. And X is just going to be one quarter times 60. One quarter times 60 over 12. And one quarter of 60 is 15. And then 15 divided by 12, divide top and bottom by 3. You'll end up with 4 at the bottom. You'll end up with 5 at the top. Is 5 fourth. The answer is... 5 4 but as you can see this is a very academic way it takes a lot of time a lot of time is not what you have in the exam you want to keep on moving you want you want to make sure you don't want to end up wasting unnecessary time in the exam even few seconds count a straightforward way would be very simple it will only take two seconds to do this problem in a straightforward way which is simply to realize that one quarter of an inch is 12 feet the driveway is 60 feet 60 one quarter inch one quarter inch is 12 feet. We don't have 12 feet, we have 60 feet. 60 is just 5 times 12. 60 is just 5 times 12. So you multiply that 5 by 5 as well. That's it, you're done. One quarter inch is 12 feet. I'm going to erase this thing so that you can. One quarter inch was 12 feet. We don't have 12 feet, we have 60 feet. 60 feet, you still have to realize that 60 is 5 times 12. Multiply that side by 5, and therefore you have to multiply this side by 5. That's it. It's 5 times 1 quarter, which of course is 5 fourths. 5 fourths of an inch will represent 60 feet of driveway in the, on, on the blueprint. The answer is 5 fourths. We are not done with it. We have, to, we, have to, we have to convert this improper fraction so that it matches here, which is going to be the same as 1 and 1 quarter. 1 and 1 quarter. The answer is B. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.